Last night was the best NBA playoff doubleheader of all time. First, you have the Knicks and 76ers in an absolute dogfight, a slugfest, and it finishes with the Knicks scoring six points in a matter of maybe 12 seconds to come back from down by five to go up by one in what was a wild sequence to finish that game. Madison Square Garden, the roof must have blown off of that place. The energy, the vibes are incredible. And to follow that up with game two of Lakers Nuggets, the Lakers have not beaten the Nuggets in the last nine times they've played together, but it looks like they have them on the ropes. Anthony Davis is playing out of his mind. LeBron is directing traffic better than a crossing guard. And they got them down by 20. And the Nuggets, being the defending champs they are, they were cool, they were calm, they were collected, they were resilient, and slowly they just kept cutting into that lead the entire second half, and it got down to those last two, three minutes, and they tie the game up. LeBron misses an open three, and what do you know? Jamal Murray comes down the court. He had been struggling the first three quarters. He gets it going in the, the fourth quarter, ends up with 14 points, and none bigger than a step back. Mid range, fall away over Anthony Davis, who just said he was the best defensive player in the NBA. Buzzer beater, game winner, poetry in motion. I'm going to dive into both of these games and obviously their electric finishes here today. So leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. I'm going to get into it right here at the very end of this Knicks 76ers game and break down exactly how the Knicks were able to claw this victory out from what looked like a seeming defeat. It was about a minute and 30 seconds left, and I'm just going to start rolling and kind of talk through what I'm seeing here. Um, so Brunson has been struggling heavily in this series, has been super inefficient. Josh Hart has been the guy for them from the three-point line between him, DiVincenzo, and uh, Deuce McBride. He isn't able to get that one to go. Tyrese Maxey, like I said, unbelievable game in game one and game two. He's been the best guard in this series by far. High screen role with Embiid, who, again, is not 100%, not a heavy, aggressive role from him. But big shot makers make big shots. That is a huge shot for Tyrese Maxey. Puts the Sixers up four with a minute and nine seconds left. Down by five. Kyle Lowry just made his first free throw. 47 seconds left. Can't hand the second one. That's a huge, huge one-point swing. Over to Josh Hart, back to Brunson. Now he has Batum on him. They're coming. They're trapping him. Loose ball. DiVincenzo, the first one to get to it, scoops it up. Over to Brunson, the corner. Side set three. Again, struggling. Sometimes you just need one lucky bounce. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it real quick here. The Philadelphia 76ers have a timeout. They don't use it. Nick Nurse says he's trying to call a timeout. Keep looking at him. He hasn't called it yet. He's trying to call it now. The referee's not looking. He's not really making any effort to, to look like he's emphatically trying to call the timeout. That, the Sixers don't have possession there. You can't give them a timeout. Now, look. We want to say that this is a foul. Yay, nay. I don't think that determined the outcome of this game. Was Tyrese Maxey probably fouled? Yes. But if I go back a little bit here, after he makes the three, Jalen Brunson, watch Tyrese Maxey and Josh Hart. Is that not a push off? Like, if we want to get really nitpicky about it, you could call it. There was a foul before Tyrese Maxey even got fouled that wasn't called. The referees did not dictate the outcome of this game. And the 76ers, particularly in the press conferences, Joel Embiid and Nick Nurse, tried to play off the narrative that they were screwed by the referees in this one. Um, I mean, Tyrese got fouled, you know, a couple of times. You know, we we just had the same thing happen against Miami with Tyler. You know, that's just unacceptable to, you know, put us in that situation. Um, you know, that's, yeah, that's unacceptable uh, to lose a game like this, especially in the playoffs. So, I mean, yeah. We take a look at getting it in quick. We don't get it in quick. Uh, I call timeout. Uh, referee looked right at me. 
ignored me. Went into Tyrese, I called timeout again. Then the melee started and yeah, I mean, I'm not, I guess I gotta run out onto the floor or do something to make sure and get his attention, but I needed a timeout there to advance it. Would have been good, but couldn't get it. That was not the case. Could have called that a foul on Maxi there on Josh Hart. Push off wasn't called. Rush of an inbounds play happens. Again, he gets mugged up a little bit in the corner. But at the end of the day, he's got the ball on the ground. Why would you ever take your hands off of the basketball in this situation? Again, when you have a timeout. And now again, Nick Nurse is after trying to get in and didn't call it. And then now he wants to get it. The, there's, the ball is not in your possession. It was discombobulated from the get-go. You put the blame on Nick Nurse for not demanding the timeout while Kyle Lowry had the ball. You can put it on Kyle Lowry for forcing the inbounds play and not taking the timeout. It's not a great play from a veteran guy. It's very unlikely of him. Um, but again, as Tyrese Max in this situation, you, you know, you're, you're getting roughed up in the corner. You're probably getting fouled. You hit the deck, two hands on the ball, like a running back. Security. You cannot make an attempt to kick the ball out in this situation because now Josh Hart scoops it up. And it goes over to DiVincenzo, who misses it. There's another thing. They had to look and missed it. All you got to do is get a defensive rebound, and this game is probably over. But no, Isaiah Hardenstein, who's been huge in this series, cleans up the glass. And just listen to the call. Look at the vibes in Madison Square Garden. Dante three Vincenzo. Two for a dollar. He's not missing. And that would be the final bucket of the game from the field for the New York Knicks. Because on the ensuing possession, Tyrese Maxey gets it all the way in the backcourt, a full steam. That's why Isaiah Harnstein is on my all-defensive team. Absurd defensive recovery to keep up with one of the fastest guards in the NBA right now. And that did it. Free throws wrapped this one up. And the New York Knicks are up 2-0 on the 76 in a game where they absolutely should have lost. And the 76ers have nobody to blame but themselves. So you have to give your credit where credit is due to a scrappy New York Knicks team that scrapped it out all the way to the very end of the season to get the two seed, and now here they are up 2-0 on the Philadelphia 76ers. Now I want to get into the Lakers-Nuggets game because it was the perfect way to end the night, a doubleheader, which I said was, I think, the best of all time in NBA playoff history. I, I can't remember two games so tight, so down to the wire, and both with fantastic finishes. Coming off of what happened in the Knicks 76ers game, like I mentioned, Anthony Davis had been great in this game. LeBron James had been directing traffic. They were on point for three quarters. And in that fourth quarter, shot quality wasn't as good. Anthony Davis only took one shot in the fourth quarter after being so aggressive for the first three. That pick and roll that was working so well for them in the second and third quarter, it like disappeared. They went away from entirely. Jokic had been getting one-on-one -on -one matchups between Anthony Davis and Rui for pretty much the entirety of the game. Wasn't as big of a deal when they were up 20, but as this lead continued to shrink, I think Ting Legler mentioned it earlier on first take, it, it felt like it was a guaranteed bucket when he's getting it in the post. He's just able to get so deep into the post, and we're just going to start rolling the film here. But, like, that's so easy for him. And one. And one for Jokic. is now a two-point game. He cans the free throw. We go over to the Lakers' next possession. Again, what had been working for them so well was that LeBron and Anthony Davis pick and roll. Where is it at? Where is it at? Shot clock is rolling away. You have to force up a tough you know, pull-up three-pointer by Austin Reeves there. That's not the best shot. 
And it's surprising that they went away from what worked so well for them because the Nuggets didn't really seem to have an answer for it, and they didn't force them to have to find one because they just went away from it. Jamal Murray now. LeBron makes an incredible defensive play here and gets the dunk on the other end. At this moment, I'm thinking, you know, it was sloppy, but the 20-point lead was just enough, just enough cushion for them to get it done. That's what, the, what I'm feeling like thinking that while I'm watching this game. Instantly, Jokic tries to force up a crazy shot and get a foul, which he's been doing for a while. But this rebound by Anthony, Anthony, this rebound by Aaron Gordon is the play of the game. I understand Jamal Murray won on a buzzer beater. This is the play of the game. Because down by three with a minute and 20 seconds left, this offensive rebound leads to this. The pass down low, Gordon. Crowds back into it. Sounds a lot like MSG, doesn't it? Here it is, tie game. And that's a back-breaking three-pointer. I want to get to this last Lakers possession here. It's 99 to 99. Look at the difference in the shot clock and game clock. They can run this clock out a lot and leave the Nuggets with not a lot of time to get a good, well-action set off on the other end, make or miss, and you can potentially play for overtime. A KCP tries to sell a, a push off here. They don't call it. LeBron gets a wide open three. People are going to be critical of him taking this shot. If he makes it, they praise him. If they miss it, they hate on him for it. I don't have an issue with the shot. He's wide open. He's knocked down a couple of threes. That one doesn't go. And that leads to what caps off, like I said, the greatest back to back doubleheader in NBA playoff history. And I'm just going to let it go. Tough shot. But I'll be honest, it felt like he was going to make it the whole way. How he had played in this fourth quarter, I think I mentioned it earlier, 14 of his 20 points after struggling so much. To get that one to go, now, yeah, I'm glad they have the replay. He gets the switch on to Anthony Davis, and I'll pause it. He created a lot of space, but, I mean, it's not the worst defense. This is a tough shot, but Jamal Murray is a tough shot maker. Hands it, and the Nuggets take a 2-0 series lead in this one heading to LA and have now beaten the LA Lakers 10 consecutive times. The Lakers again, like the 76ers, tried to put the blame on the officials for different ticky tack things there. And I'm once again going to say it, I'll probably put the clips in here. I don't understand what's going on in the replay center, to be honest. I said it, I think I said it this year or last year or whatever. D'Lo clearly gets hit in the face on a drive. Replay center is, is, is going to go. That doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. It makes no sense to me. It bothers me. I'm sorry to answer your question, but that shit is like. And then I just saw what happened with the uh, Sixers Nick game too. What are we? What are we doing? The officials did not blow a twenty-point lead. The Lakers did that. The officials did not stop running the LeBron and Anthony Davis pick and roll. The Lakers did that. The officials did not make Anthony Davis take one shot in the fourth quarter. The Lakers did that. You don't get to blame anybody else but yourself for this one. Tip your cap to the Nuggets. I said it a bunch. They're a resilient group. Championship DNA. The defending champs. They know people are going to take their best punch and their best swing at them all night. They come and respond every single time. That's why they are my pick to win the NBA championship again this year. But you don't get to blame another team for blowing, or excuse me, not another team, but the officials for blowing a 20 point lead in the fashion that you did. Flat out, you got outplayed in the fourth quarter, which was what happened in game one too. It's what happened basically in all the games in their playoff series last year, every single game was close down the stretch. Just a couple more plays 
in crunch time that pushes the Nuggets over the edge. And here we are, 2-0 up for the Nuggets, 2-0 up for the Knicks. Playoffs are exciting, man, so continue to stay locked in. If you really like this type of video, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'm out. Jamal Murray made a shot.